Now, this is the part I'm going to be tying. It's the time of year when we're, the large midge patterns are coming off, especially black. Uh, this one here is a, it's one I've tied many times. It's uh, it's basically a light, quite a light buzz. It's on a light wired hook. The hook I'm using is a, is a G point, this one. It's just a, that was a buzzer light, as you can see, size 12. Now, it's in the black nickel colour, so it obviously goes well with the, the colour of the flies too. But it works, you can basically tie any colour midge on it if you want. This is a nice pattern, it sits high in the water. You're looking to keep this around about, say, the two foot area, again, between the top and the surface. Uh, and with the, the way it's dressed, it's going to hang about there unless you take it down with a, a heavier fly. But it's a good pattern, so it's, it's certainly worth tying. Now, materials are quite simple, really. Uh, just put this into the device, tighten up. Thread, there's a uni thread in black, just a normal thread. And we start just at the eye, come to, just basically wind to the point of the hook. And then take away the waste. Now for the rib, I'm using this here. This is a uni miler in clear. It's just a clear wrap. Uh, it's just a, it's a medium. Now for tying smaller flies, you just give it a stretch and it'll reduce by half. Now you could use a silver rib, you could use whatever. A flexi floss, white flexi floss is good. I've tied many using that. Uh, it's a variant to this one. So, as you can see, what I'm doing is tying it in the way down. Then we tie in a dyed black pheasant tail fibres. Now, looking around about at least half a dozen or so. Just pull them 90 degrees from the stem, tips the line up, and then remove them. You want to hold these, the butt ends, the bottom of the fibre. And then come round with a loose turn. Now, what I'm going to do is first, but I'm going to come up with two or three turns. And then come on round with a loose turn and pull it into the tip and then wind up nice and tight. So we're bringing the pheasant tail fibre the opposite way the way I'm going to rub the fly and the way I wind the thread. So we just work our way up. Because the fibre is getting thicker as we go we should get a taper in the body to this point. Tying it down we just go across the pheasant tail fibre and then a turn onto the hook across the pheasant tail fibre and turn onto the hook. That there will lock it in. And then we can remove the waste. Bring up our clear wrap. So we do a turn at the back. Nice and tight and rub the body of the fly. As I say, you want to reduce the thickness then you just stretch it. Make sure that's caught in. Trim away. Take it down two thirds of the way. Then we tie in some flexi floss, flexi floss dyed sunburst. Now I dyed this myself, so you can buy it. It's quite easy. It's just the Vanguard sunburst dye and the white flexi floss. Now what I do is I just basically about an inch fold this round the thread and keep it on the underside. Keep it tight and wind to this point here in line with the point of the hook and then let it go. That's going to give the wing bud. Now you can use the sunburst, hot orange or red, it's up to yourself, or you could use goose bites if you want. Now I'm going to be using as well, you can, this is light red, light bright. There's a few companies do it, this, this is the original light bright. Now you can also use uh, a dubbing of some sort if you have got it. So we just lightly dub it onto the thread and use wind the thread through it to catch it and then stroke it back. Just like that. So there I've got some this is from Vineyards. This is just dyed black peacock carol. See the single strand. So we pull it out. Now I just catch it in the centre. A couple of turns. Just fold it back. Take the thread down to about maybe a head length from the eye of the hook. And then we wind down and back up and then back. Just to thicken up the thorax. Just wind this the normal way to this point. Catch it with the thread. Then you must protect it. Just take the thread through it. 
you will trap some of the fibres, but no, it's okay. It's, you just need the colour. And that there, then you're ribbing the, the hair open, protecting it, it'll last far longer. And what I like to do is to stroke back with my fingers the, the fine hair And as well, get a bit of velcro here, just catch some of the, the red on the top, the light bright, and just stroke it back. And then with ring buds, we bring these up onto the top on the eye. So we bring these round. Just take your time. Just come over the top. And then it's not tight, it's just you want it, if you reduce it too much, you reduce the colour. Just make sure you leave enough room my head length so you can tie this in. A good six or so turns and then the easiest way is just to stretch it and trim away. And again, just tidy this area up. Just make sure you tie in the, the flexi floss or the stretch floss, depending on what it's called. And you could finish it that, you could basically tie off. But I'm going to put some breathers on it and I'm just going to use some marabou. So it's just white marabou. You don't need much. Just take, a, take some from the, the stem. And then what I like to do is moisten my fingers and just run it through. This is just mainly to, to, to control it while you tie it in. So I just stroke it back. Now you'll get a few flies out of this. So don't throw it away once you've tied the fly. What we do is just catch it on the top, single turn, and then basically bring the long end to yourself and then figure eight through it. So this is why I moisten it so you can control it. So we're doing a figure eight, so we just bring a figure eight through. Nice and tight. A couple of times is enough. Bring it up on top and then just form the head. Tidy things up, just leave that at this point. Go straight in the whip finish. Trim away your thread. Just check things is okay. It's fine. Just trim it, just pull it back. So we lift it up, straight up, put this other points in. And then we trim it round about maybe 2mm. Straight cut. And as I say, keep this for your next fly. Some more moisture on it and sit in your desk. And this is your breathers. And fluff them out and you can see the shape you get in the profile. Now you could use wool, you could use whatever you have. To varnish it, what I'm doing is just pulling it back. Now I'm using quite a heavy varnish because I don't want it to spread up into the marabou, so this is quite thick. So we just tap the head all the way around. Even the eye, just you may fill up the eye, don't worry about it. If you can rotate the vise, do that. Then I'm going to use a piece of wire just to clean out the eye. And there we are. Just turn the excess, just wipe it with your finger. I'll bring up one of tied. I'll just leave that just now because you don't want to pull these breathers forward. So I'll just sit this one down, put it on a piece of foam. I'll show you the finished fly. So there we are. That's the, the midge pattern. I just call this a corb midge because I'm, I tie it for mainly the, the corb for a friend that fishes there. So if there's any duck fly coming off, this is a, it's a good, good pattern. And there we are. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you enjoy the videos, please subscribe. It does help. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. So uh, enjoy your time. Get out there when the fishing season starts. And hopefully if you use this and the midger coming off, you'll do well.